like practicing the scales and stuff wasn't playing the guitar you would have to do you know play along with the record you know slow to learn some of the stuff you have to, I'd have to slow it down but uh, uh, basically a uh, little bit of everybody some people I don't really know who I actually was influenced I don't know that name the guy from Rare Earth you know uh, this guy was playing with Buddy Miles one time on one of his albums with the with the, uh, the drums and with the, uh, the flag type thing on the verge so then I dun 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 you know <laughs> just trying to figure that out and this guy uh, Ed Sparks give him some play give him some love Ed out there uh, he knew Tiki Fullwood, who was the drummer at the time. There was a concert at the Cleveland, I believe it was at the Cleveland Public Hall downtown, where it was uh, a tour with uh, Bloodstone. Um, I forget the other group. I think it was Bloodstone and the Fun Funkadelic, or part of the Funkadelic. I don't know what. Actually, I don't even know how what they they called the group. <laughs> you know, at that time. I don't know if it was Parliament Funkadelic or Funkadelic or what, you know. Because whoever had the hit record at the time or something, I don't know. But anyway, uh, the guy, we were, you know, getting his his thing together. I was teaching him how to play. And we're on the east side of Cleveland now. And um, it's, a, it's an after party, but I'm kind of shifted. So anyway, from trying to learn the part earlier that day, we had our stuff set over, um, set up over this guy's house at Sparks. So he knew the drummer, Tiki Fulwood. I get back to that. He, he gets us, he walks us in backstage, lies to myself backstage, you know. And uh, we're in. We just stay in. We got in free. That's the first backstage thing. And checked out the concert. Uh, met Tiki after, uh, in between. Uh, set changes for the band and I guess he invited everybody over. I know he invited everybody over to the after party because I was there. So it was this crazy after party after the show and they wanted me to kick the maggot brain. You know, they wanted me to kick the uh, play maggot brain. It wasn't a set up audition or nothing like that. We just happened to have the stuff set up. So I started playing it. You know, it wasn't like, wait, everybody crowd around and hear Mike, you know, play Mega Man. It was like, just, I just started playing it. And at that time, it was, uh, it was Cordell Monson, who was Boogie, known as Boogie, and Gary Shatter, a doo wop there. And, and um, my, my cousin was playing the, the rhythm part, or just the chord, arpeggiations, Mega Man. And I played Mega Man. It was just us two kicking it. And, Everybody kind of like, uh, I, don't know, I don't know exactly how it happened, but they wound up in the room over my shoulder. Eddie, Eddie Hayes, the original player, from Maggie Brand, was like over my shoulder watching. I didn't know he was there. George was right beside me somewhere. And I was like, at the time, like I said, I was trying to learn tunes, you know, to prove that I could play. So Maggie Brain was one I was trying to remember each note. <laughs> <laughs> that it was that was being played, or at least that's how I captured most of it. Maybe I'm not all the way all on it. Some people think I played note for note all this, but you know, I really can't do it like Eddie. You know, and uh, I mean, that's what got me. Like it got me into it. It was almost like an audition I wasn't planned. Tiki called me at my house like two weeks. Tiki Fool with a drum called me at my house two weeks after that night and then they wanted me to play in the group.